Which one are you? One, two, or three? It's your choice which one you identify with. Once you've made your decision, you're going to receive a short reading about your personality and some guidance on how to navigate the future. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Let's get into it. If you enjoy this types of readings, this types of videos, make sure to subscribe to my channel and consider booking a personal tarot reading with me to support the channel. So as you know, this is a pick a card style reading. So once you've made your selection of which object you identify with, you can skip to that part of the video and watch your reading there. We're going to start with the first one. And then obviously we're going to have the second one. And not so surprisingly, after that, we're going to talk about the third one. And if you would like, you can use this reading in a slightly different way to receive three separate readings. You can um, identify yourself, choose one that you resonate with, and use the remainder two to get a reading about the personality and to get a message about two other people in your life that you can identify with these objects. So it's up to you how you use this reading. I hope it's going to serve you well. Let's get into it. So the first one, who are you? Let's see. The page of pentacles. Page of Pentacles is a very non-grandiose character. So even though you picked the biggest item from the, the possibilities, the options here, you seem to be very humble and very realistic about what is achievable very open to criticism, very open to find new pathways of developing the self. The Page of Pentacles is holding up the pentacle, the symbol of the material world. So there's an orientation towards what is physically, tangibly real. There's a sense of attraction towards empirical knowledge and technical skills. So your personality is a very flexible and absorbent one. You want to learn. You're not shy to put yourself in the position of the page. So you're ready to evolve because you know that there's room for improvement and that's a really good thing it's a very constructive thing however just to mention a downside to the page of pentacles there's a certain level of naivete and an impressionable nature that can mean that other people might be getting advantage of you or taking advantage of you, rather. So you have to be careful with that. Let's see what your guidance is. All right. 
And here we have the Nine of Wands. So this aligns with what I've just said. The Nine of Wands is asking you to take some safety measures, to be cautious, to not let yourself be too trusting of others, to strengthen your immune system in a spiritual sense, to see when someone is invading your space, when someone is trying to um, take advantage of your malleable nature, when they are treating you as a tool, as a, um, as a utility, something to utilize, when they objectify you. So it's very important to be on your guard when you're dealing with people in the upcoming time period because it can very easily happen that you will be dragged into some situations that do not align with your boundaries. So be careful, be truthful, and stand up for yourself. Number two, who are you? Let's have a look. And here we have the Six of Swords. You are a person in transit. There's a, a sense of temporariness about the Six of Swords where it's not clearly determined and it's not calcified yet what the truth and what the, the meaning of your life is. So you're still seeking. There's a sense of um, trying to piece a puzzle together, trying to get to a conclusion that is both reassuring and reasonable. Swords represent the intellectual realm. And with the Six of Swords, we're seeing an effort to utilize and concentrate mental energy in order to overcome uh, emotional difficulties. The boat is on a huge body of water, which the water represents the vastness of emotional complexities. And the six swords are used to, uh, at least in some, uh, some people theorize that, that, that the swords are used to plug the holes that are in the boat to make it uh, functional, to make it so that they can get to the other side. So, hence the temporariness. You are someone who is actively working on improving your circumstances and your personality seems to be under construction at the moment. So let's see what the cards are suggesting to you. What's your guidance? And here we have the Four of Wands. Beautiful card of acceptance and warmth and finding a community. So what this card really means is do not stop improving yourself. Do not stop trying to figure this out until you get to that point where you really find your circle, your community. Because that is going to strengthen your personality. It's going to help you contextualize what you have learned about the universe and about yourself. You really need other people to give you feedback and to accept you and to uh, encourage you. So don't stop until you find those people 
that can elevate you energetically that you are on the same page with. Number three, who are you? The three of cups. You are connected with others emotionally to the point where the lines of where you end and where they begin can be a little bit blurred. There's a sense of seeking the exchange and the synergy of these emotionally uplifting uh, moments. There's a seeking of an emotional equilibrium. And in terms of your personality, there's an easygoing nature that the Three of Cups is exposing or that it's, um, it's referring to, where it is of utmost importance to you to find a way to harmonize with other people, to find a way to get to that moment where all three of you are raising your glass and everything is perfect and all of you are tuned into the same experience. Now, individuality and uh, the ability to tolerate differences and to tolerate conflicts can be a point of a point of contention here in this personality style so let's see what the cards are suggesting here that you do And here we have the Majestic Death card, which is suggesting to me that in order to individuate, in order to find your true voice and your true self, which seems to be a problem here, it seems as though the priority is finding a common rhythm with others and that sometimes can only happen to the detriment of your own desires and so death the death card is here to remind you that you can always start from scratch that you are under no obligation to repeat the past to continue going on with a narrative that no longer makes sense, even if at your core you have this uh, desire to harm, to have harmony with others, which is a very nice thing. It's a very good thing. Without it, uh, you would have antisocial tendencies that would be um, very difficult, a very difficult life for you and for others as well. So it's a good thing that you have that sensitivity to others. However, death is asking you to take a very radical approach and ask yourself if you could be born again. What would you dif do differently? And what are some things that are actually dying in your life. Some relationships, some uh, processes, values, memories that you are still holding on to, but that which are dying, that which are actually just holding you back. So they are like dead weight. And so Death is this all-encompassing process of emotional purification. 
You can start from scratch. You can go back to the drawing board and reinterpret your existing relationships and perhaps uh, eliminate some relationships that are parasitic. Because in your case, it can very easily happen that you're trying to harmonize with people who are no good for you. And so the death card is inviting you to evaluate these things. Well, thank you for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like, leave a comment, or do whatever you would like. I appreciate your support, but you are under no obligation to do any of it. Thank you. See you next time.